Mary Davis and I met some time ago at Kawa Coffee Shop on Second Street, one of our favorite places. So uh, I got to know Mary uh, shortly after she came to work for the city. She's working in Steve Cover's office, which is why Steve is on today. Uh, she calls her position the Office of Public Art. I don't know whether Steve knows that or not, but anyway. Uh, Mary's name is oh, yeah. Mary Davis. Mary Davis, <laughs> not Mary. Mary Davis. Remember that, everybody. <laughs> she'll smack it if you don't call her Mary Davis. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Mary has, is kicking off her career with uh, the city of Sarasota by trying to develop a new public art master plan and create within that plan a process for the acquisition of public art, something we haven't had for years and years and years, and it has created problems for us, including me. <laughs> anyway, Mary has a slide presentation 58 slides that she's going to do in 10 minutes. So, Mary Davis, you're <laughs> all. Thanks, Ken. And hey, everybody, I'm so happy to be here. I say that every time I present, but I actually really like presenting, um, especially when it's about public art. It just, it, it gives you a warm feeling, and, and I hope you'll leave today with a very warm, cuddly feeling about uh, the City of Sarasota Public Art Program. Um, so I did want to mention just one thing, you know, I joined the public art uh, uh, team here at the city with um, about 20 years, actually close to 30 years of design experience um, as a landscape architect, but also I've been in the public art realm for over a decade and, and really feel like this is one of my best, the best cities that I've, I've ever been able to interact with. And, and that's a lot to do with you. So I wanted to thank you as citizens of the downtown for, for creating such a, a really beautiful place for public art. I mean, I look forward to collaborating with you. Um, so without further ado, because we're on a tight schedule, I wanna go ahead and share my slideshow with you. Let me know when you can see it. Got it, it's up. Okay, good. Um, so one of the things I'm doing is I'm kind of taking the show on the road. Um, the reason I'm taking it on the road is because this public art master plan is going to be for us as as the city it's going to be your plan it's going to be everybody's plan um so i have really worked hard to create a blueprint um of, of the art and culture uh, expectations for the city and i'm going to just run through this very quickly with you um mostly this slideshow is about what the plan is going to contain um I wanna leave a lot more space in the back end of this, plan, of this presentation for your comments and for your questions because a lot of what we are gonna be talking about during this process is what you want to see from your city, right? So um, one of the questions that we always ask is why do we have public art? Um, public art will contribute to our visual identity uh, continuously as it has for the last 30 years. And, and really since the city was, in, um, was a city, it created a city image and it will continue to create a city image. It will create and continue to create civic connectivity. Um, what we'd hope to be able to provide with this framework, however, is a stronger neighborhood identity. And that also affects the downtown neighborhood. And then lastly, of course, we really want you to be able to create and have joy and meaningful dialogue in the public realm. Um, I've gotten some comment on this last one because people say, how could you have both? But you can, you can have both. Um, we're gonna come up with purpose and mission statements during this process. I don't wanna dig too deep into this because we wanna rush through this a little bit, but um, the purpose is going to be to implement this plan and to ensure that the city's commitment to you and to support the growth of diverse, high quality and meaningful public art. You know, so we're doing that now, but we, we have a ways to go, but I think this is gonna be a really meaningful journey for all of us. Um, this will get teased out a little bit more as we move through the process. We will also, of course, be aligning with our plans that we already have in the city. And, and one of those more meaningful plans is our city plan and our downtown master plan. Um, 
we want to be sure that this framework acts as a guide um, and can coincide with the other uh, guides that we have already in place. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but you know, who, who came up with the idea of putting a giant clothespin in the middle of a field? I don't know, but you know, it works. Um, again, the city of Sarasota envisions an equitable community where integrating public art into city initiatives in neighborhood revitalization efforts and private development is a norm, right? Um, where we can all feel ex and experience quality art as part of our daily lives. And I think that's really important because we do that now. Um, and I'm sure all of you have a favorite piece or maybe you have a piece that, that you don't like so much, but that causes that conversation that we wanna keep um, working on. And we want this to be part of our daily lives and not just an exception to our life. Some of these goals, I'll just kind of um, glaze over, but you know, I'd like for you to read these in more detail. This slideshow will be available on our website and, and I want you to be able to go back and read some of these, but you know, a lot of these goals are going to be things that we can point back to when we're going to commission for art projects, when we're going um, to, to speak at other uh, civic groups, we wanna be able to talk about our healthy city and talk about our creative neighborhoods and cultural districts goals. You know, so these are really important um, foundations to this plan. Just some of the other uh, places that we, that in cities and, and jurisdictions that have master plans, you know, we'd be kind of falling in with Tampa and um, Volusia County, Boynton Beach. Um, I'm actually helping get uh, Newport Ritchie started which I thought was really interesting. They gave me a call the other day and said, we'd really like to get into, involved with the public art master plan. How do we do it? I thought, well, let me get through this one first and I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, you probably all know this, but, but you know, this is, these are the arts facts and, and how much the arts and culture sector generates is, is magnificent in our state. Um, we all really are proud of our public art program in Sarasota and, and give it a lot of credit for why Sarasota is such a beautiful place to live. They also, people that come to, to experience the arts, um, spend a lot of money and, and, and boost a lot for our income and our, and our economy. So we really wanna keep that going. We want a healthy arts culture here. Um, and there's no better way than to provide that framework for development in the future. Um, I'm going to move forward a little bit. Uh, there are some recommendations here that I think you as members of DSCA are going to understand that are going to be important for, for public art, but these are just some recommendations for implementation, small to large, right? So we have um, really small projects like script etchings and paintings on buildings and in, in concrete sidewalks. That seems like something very small that we can make happen sooner than later. Just walking down the street and coming across a poem is something I would love to see for our city. You know, in other cities, you'd be walking your dog and, and you see a poem or you go across a colorful cross rock. We do have a few of these in our city already. Um, you know, we wanna be able to integrate uh, mosaics and tile art into sidewalks and park benches. Um, and also collaboration. We want to be continuing our relationship with Ringling, um, with our student population, also our aging population. Um, a lot of retirees are interested in getting back into the arts and, and we want to be able to provide opportunities for them to do so. Here's a good one, Art on the Legacy Trail. That's something that we really, everybody's kind of getting um, you know, excited about because the Legacy Trail is, is, is here and we want to be able to provide hopefully some art there. It's, it's probably easier said than done, but, but we're not going to give up on that. Um, and then these are just larger, uh, higher end, high level recommendations from, you know, a design perspective. We want to be able to place art um, in meaningful and discoverable and complementary to the existing landscape. Um, this is important because we want to be able to grow a connected and storied collection. It's super important to our future. We also want to be able to take some risks. Um, you know, who knew that a, a giant clothespin could look so good next to a building? But, you know, somebody took that risk and it's become 
a big part of the story for the city. This is in Philadelphia. I don't know how many of you have been there, but um, also this is a big one for me, just as a planner and as a designer, we want to encourage intersectoral collaboration. And that just means investing in these community partnerships, whether it be businesses or nonprofits or other governmental entities that will solidify the cultural future of Sarasota. We're all in this together. So that's what I get really excited about and, um, and look forward to. So I'm going to go look very quickly through this. But by the way, this is, I think, now installed at the Tampa International Airport. And I can't see everybody, but I hope some of you have seen this because I cannot wait to see this giant thing. So let me go. We will be talking about fundraising in the plan. Um, we will be talking about fundraising goals, such as creating an independent, maybe an organization to support public art in Sarasota, um, establishing some initiatives, again, promoting strong cultural uh, community partnerships. I think this is really important to perhaps look into business-led scholarships, seed grants, you know, things like that. Our city should be growing with our artists as well. Um, and then this is just a chapters list. I wanted to share this with you because we will be discussing these in more detail at our public meeting coming up. We do have a public meeting um, for artists on January the 20th. I would encourage you to attend. I would, we have recently um, just made that one a Zoom meeting as well, just in light of your discussion earlier. Um, and we do, will have our link on our website, but we will be talking in more detail about chapters and what's gonna go into the master plan. And then just in terms of timeline, I mean, we're sadly, I'm only at the beginning of this public engagement. This is the little yellow box is me. Um, but you know, we're gonna be working through all of these steps to make sure that this plan isn't just um, a, a, you know, a, a shallow document. You know, we could put together a 20 page master plan and be done. And I just, I just didn't wanna do that. You know, so we're gonna be working through this. It's gonna take us about a year. Um, and in that process, we're gonna be gathering tons of information. Um, and then from here on out, it's just fun. Like, I'm just gonna throw some of this out there. Uh, at some of my meetings, we, we have literally gone slide by slide and talked about each one of these and people just have so many fun questions. But this is just some of the things that are happening um, around the country, around the world. You know, COVID testing sites that, that have fun art, you know, where, what better place? Um, applications of, of glass and don't forget your troll. Um, you know, social justice art. This is one of my favorite pieces. I thought this was really a, a very um, recognizable piece now is this fearless girl. There's illuminated art, art where you can gather. Um, you know, so I, I love putting these images out there for people because these are things that we can also do as a city. Um, and we can also strive together downtown, especially to create an experience for people. Um, our duck is our favorite. We love this duck. Um, if any of you want to vote for the duck, just let me know. We will put out a ballot for the duck. Um, but again, these are things that we can do sooner than later um, and really need your support in order to be able to bring some of these things to the downtown. Now, having said that, this is a citywide program now. So we're actually going to be promoting public art installations citywide. And sometimes that's a little more challenging right? Because you don't have the urban experience or the walkable experience. Um, so we'll be talking with neighborhoods and figuring out how we can bring this to them as well. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, the end of our cultural plan uh, presentation. Here are some of the dates and times for our coming meetings. Again, this January 20th meeting is now online. So um, if you plan to come, please check our website and we will have uh, posted that link for you. But we also have two other meetings coming up and uh, look forward to seeing you. And that concludes my presentation. Mary, you did great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you, you, you rolled right through that. Um, David, it's Mary Davis. <laughs> Mary Davis. <laughs> okay. Mary okay. Davis. <laughs> you, you, you did great. Thanks. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah. Here we go. Now, now uh, may we open it up to any questions or comments from our, our board members. 
uh, Kathy. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, I'm very impressed and I'm so happy to see that this is going citywide, um, that it's going to be, uh, I think that's it's time. And, you know, there are a lot of places that are deserving of art. Um, one of my um, concerns I have is actually on slide, um, slide ten, uh, nine, number four, you okay. have something in there, the requirement of developers. Um, and I'm, I'm a little leery of that um, and, and wonder what that, the incentives are gonna be for developers. Um, I think with the growth in the downtown condos coming up in the downtown developers come and go so quickly, um, relatively speaking, and leave behind artwork that uh, becomes the burden of the city um, or uh, the condo owners. And um, it's not sustainable art. And I'm not quite sure what the requirement now is of developers to the city. I think that it was, uh, you know, a set amount at one time, and then that has gone up. But um, it's something that I personally am very concerned about: um, what those incentives look like, and how you know you're going to move that forward. I I would suggest caution <laughs> with that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I am also suggesting caution, um, just from a planning and public arts perspective. But let me answer a couple of these questions. Um, we currently uh, have a half percent for art program uh, where anything over a million dollars, uh, you contribute a half a percent towards the public art fund. Now, having said that, that's one of the lowest percent for art programs in the state and, and in the country. Um, most percent for art programs are 1%. Um, now, we did have a, a lower, we raised the cap basically um, yeah. what the starting point to 1 million. Now we did have it where there was no, there was no minimum. And, um, you know, we, we removed that in order to get a bigger bang for the buck. And also I think because it was, it, it's arduous to work with a contractor and a developer on a small amount, it's, it's easier to help them through this process um, for the larger chunks of money. Cause we can fund things like the roundabout program which has been hugely successful. Um, in terms of incentives, I think that what we need to be doing is understanding the value that public art um, provides to not only their development, um, but to the city um, that they're trying to sell to, for people to move here. You know, come live, with, come live in our city. This is a, a certain um, opportunity for the, the public art genre to become not a side dish, but a real ingredient um, into the recipe of success for downtown and, and for um, economic development. So it's more or less about the conversation and also just being a part of it. Um, but it's yeah, definitely I, ongoing and thank you. Okay, and yeah, I, I see I, that, Alan, you've got your uh, hand up. Yeah, I, uh, Mary Davis, I'm really uh, very impressed with the presentation and with the whole concept. It's a huge, undertaking, which leads me to kind of a micro comment. You know, nothing succeeds like success. What I really loved about your presentation is there was a lot of whimsical art. There were things that people could just see and fall in love with and say, wow, that's neat. Yeah. Things don't have to be monumental. And I think by having that kind of art, and I know Seattle has it, I know a lot of places do, and you showed a lot. By having that kind of art it's still art but it's more whimsical it's in locations that are unexpected people are just going to get so excited about it that the program is going to take off by itself because there'll be public public desire for the program right. not just passive gee it's nice to have those in the in the roundabouts um so i really would encourage the kind of thing to excuse me that you, you use as illustrations to become reality in order to get all 60,000 people really excited and their children. Yeah, not only their children, but it's also about um, the desire to be at, near the art, you know, to, to interact. Let's go have an ice cream downtown. Let's go walk around the yeah. giant duck. I don't think that's gonna happen, but maybe. Um, but yeah, I think your, your points are great, Mr. Friedman. Thank you. Uh, Ken? I had two things. Um, 
One is I, I didn't see a piece about public education. I think public education is very important in terms of art appreciation. Um, we've had some problems in the city. For example, in Newtown, there was a major piece of public art installed in Fred Atkins Park. It was vandalized repeatedly and finally had to be removed and put in storage, uh, apparently because people didn't like the topic, the subject of the art. Um, so we need a public edu education piece in this master plan so that the public can learn. Even my project, my diversity public art project, which was created by a renowned international sculptor was referred to as garbage in public comment before the city commission in November. So uh, I think it's really important that people understand that maybe what they don't care for is not bad stuff, that it's somebody else's cup of tea. So yeah. we need to learn that tolerance for it. But yeah, the other, and thing, I, uh, the other thing, Mary Davis, I had was um, I was talking to Vicki Randall yesterday, who, for those of you, of you who don't know, is a professor of sculpture at Ringling College of Art and Design. And she did not know about your meeting on January 20th. And so I sent her your slides and the flyer. Uh, and I was wondering what you've been doing about uh, getting the academic art community involved. Great comment and question. So I would like to weigh in and please somebody keep me on time because I can't see any, any clocks. Um, education is super important. I'm so glad you brought that up, Ken. I, I feel like we need to elevate the city's understanding of public art and understanding of art that they don't like. Stylistic differences in art does not mean that that art is bad and that they should object to it. Um, I feel like we need to have a culture or create a culture of acceptance for art in all forms. Now it has to be quality, right? Um, there are the homegrown artists that, that put their things around town or that, that um, are always gonna be contributing to, our, to our, um, our city culture here, but we also have international artists coming with new ideas. So yes, I'm with you on, on stressing that education. I think we should be having lecture series, we need to be collaborating with the academic um, community in the city. Uh, and I hope to continue to have that conversation with them. I think all of us are very busy, uh, but once this thing great, uh, gets some momentum, I believe that we're gonna all find some time to make that happen. That's a, that's a, those are great points, Ken, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Davis. Let's just take one more, if we may, to, to stay on our schedule. Is there yeah. anybody else? Uh, uh, any board member questions? Okay, we've got uh, Jim Lamble. You're on mute. Mary Davis, um, you've no doubt done the inventory of all the art spread out. So what is the number of public art, number, number one? Number two is, do you have a favorite piece that can compare to anything that you just showed us? <laughs> So we have almost 100 pieces in our collection now. Um, we were, I was astounded at that number. We have a really nice map now that we've put together. I would encourage you to get on our website and have some fun and look at all of our, our pieces together on one place. You can click on the map. You can share it with your friends and family that are visiting. Um, and thanks for putting me on the spot on that fav famous favorite piece. Um, you know, I happen to like one that I snuck into the slideshow and it's called um, Sprite. And it was the, I don't wanna go back to it, but Sprite is a very whimsical, quiet piece. Um, and Mr. Friedman, I thought your point about having things, um, you know, discovering art. It's really important that we discover art. We don't just come across a giant piece of art every day and, and think that's all we're gonna have in our, in our collection. We want to find and experience um, these quiet, whimsical pieces. So I hope we'll have more pieces like, like Sprite and, and some that are in our slideshow, but it's really hard to have a favorite um, after a while. You get to a point where you have relationships with all pieces. And so I, I look Where's forward Spr to Where is Sprite? That. Where is um, Sprite? Sprite is near the Van Wazel. It's over in that area. And if you look, look him up, 
I don't think he's as big as it looks either. It's a very, it's a very small incidental piece, but it's. Right. You know, I, I didn't put you on the spot asking you the worst piece. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for thanks for not doing well, that. <laughs> good. Mary Davis, thank you so much for being Absolutely. our guest. We look forward thank you to so much. engaging. Uh, DISCA is a very active uh, uh, association. We're accounting for about 70% of the city's population growth. And we're, we just look forward to working with you and, and your team and uh, you know pulling people together on your, some great, great ideas for our thank wonderful you. city. So thanks again. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna respond in the chat while we're moving on. Okay, all right. Thanks everybody. Uh